92, we'll get her off. <coughs> Ask Brother Clyde if he would. Bless her off. Good evening. Well, that was great. Everybody's good and awake tonight. It's certainly good to be back in the house of the Lord and uh, good to see such a wonderful, wonderful number out on a Wednesday night. Uh, before we get into prayer requests, I want to talk just a second about our fundraiser that we're having Sunday. So that's a barbecue fundraiser that's going to be for the Murphy family mission trip to Kenya. And uh, yes, takeout boxes are are going to be available. Now we've got everything set for that except for desserts. So either we need all you all to help make 300 servings or Marilyn to make 50 cakes, whichever one, <laughs> however you want to do that, I don't care, but we want to have, we're planning for about 300 people, no joke, that's what we're, we're hoping and praying for. And so uh, everything is covered, I believe we've got everything 
that, that we need except for desserts. We want to make sure we have a lot of desserts. I don't want to have to go buy fudge rounds at the last minute. So help us out, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you make desserts by, by bringing one or two desserts if you can to help us meet that 300 mark. And then uh, revival begins on the 22nd with uh, Dale Wheeler, and that's 7 p.m. nightly. So that's a couple things let's keep in, in mind coming up really soon. It's time to go before the Lord in prayer at this time. Does anybody have any spoken request? Let's remember this. Let's remember Don's sister. Remember this. I have a lot of requests, but I have one special one. It's been in the hospital. John McCarran, he's got almost kidney failure. And he got the year request. I'd like to see him again. That's John Montgomery. We'll pray for him in this prayer. Yes. Remember Pat's request, and she's specifically mentioned the, the lost, and that's a very, very important something that we remember in every prayer. I'm sure everybody here has got lost family. Good. We're looking for the day where we hear you tell that Lisa's in remission and doing well. I, believe, I really believe we'll hear that. Any other spoken request? Let's keep Wayne's request in mind in this prayer. Yes, remember that that family. Any other spoken request? If not, are there any unspoken shown by this uplift in your hands? Everybody that can and will, let's gather around the altar. I ask David Butler if he will to lead us.
All right, does anybody have a song or a testimony before we turn it over to Kevin? Thank the Lord for that. Any other testimonies? All right, let's pray for Kevin as he comes. Amen. Good evening. Good, evening. good to good to be back. Appreciate. Everybody's prayers for us. We had a good trip, safe trip. Uh, it was a time or two we we seen the hand of God keep us from wrecking and other people hitting us. And anytime you get out on the road, it's uh, you're in harm's way, way ain't you? But uh, very thankful for the hand of God, and very thankful for the uh, the word of God that was preached here Sunday. It was a blessing to our heart, and it was able to watch it there, but uh, thank God for Josh, and what a wonderful, wonderful job he done Sunday, and, and uh, good to have our visitors with us tonight, good to have you all with us, and others that are visiting with us as well, if you're here tonight and you're visiting with us, it's good to have you. All right, turn with us in the book of Matthew, chapter number 9. Matthew chapter number 9. While he was in the way there, and they was, they was a lot of people come to him uh, and getting help here, and uh, they was, this, uh, this chapter is full of, of miracles that Jesus did. Uh, uh, Jairus's daughter was healed. The woman with the issue of blood, she was healed. And uh, I'll start in verse number 18. Uh, you can stand with us tonight, reverence of God's Word. And he, when he spake these things to them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but now come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. Notice uh, what, how he said that. He said, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. He had the faith. that He'd lay his hand on her, and she'd, she'd, be, she'd live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman, which was diseased with the issue of blood twelve years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. Uh, for she said within herself, uh, if I may t but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, but when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. And the fame thereof went abroad in all that land. And when Jesus was departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. Verse 28 is where we're at tonight, what's on our heart. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? And they said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then he touched, then touch he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. According to your faith, 
be it unto you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus straightly charged them, See that no man know it. But they, when they were departed, spread abroad his fame in all that country. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for the reading of your word. And Lord, we just pray, God, that you just get us out of the way and you'd use us for your glory and your honor. God, remove any sin, any doubt, any hindrance, God, in our life that would hinder your word being preached in the demonstration of the power and the Spirit of God. I realize tonight, God, you know every need in the house. God, you know every situation. God, I'm glad, God, you're able to take care of every need in every situation. Lord, and I pray tonight, God, that you give us all ear to hear the Word of God and to apply it to our heart and our life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I know we all know and familiar with the, the Scripture of, of uh, Jairus there uh, coming to Jesus and asking him to go to his house that his daughter uh, may live, that he'd touch her, uh, lay his hand upon her. And while he was in the way of the woman with the issue of blood, she came and the, the other uh, um, the accounts of the gospel says that, that uh, she pressed through the crowd to get to Jesus. And she said, if I may just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And Jesus said unto her, daughter, be of good comfort. Notice what he said there, thy faith hath made thee whole. And the Bible says that he went on and... Uh, he went on to Jairus' house, and uh, he told him she wasn't dead. She just sleep, sleepeth, and they laughed at him, and he put them out of the house. He got them out of there. Uh, he didn't want their lack of faith to hinder nothing, did he? So he, uh, he got them out of there, and he, he touched her, and she, uh, she arose. And, and, um, but what's on her heart tonight is the two blind men that came to Jesus and uh, and they, uh, they kind of like blind Bartimaeus here, said the same thing. Uh, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when they followed him all the way uh, where Jesus was going. They were persistent in getting their need met, wasn't they? The Bible says here that when he came, when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. They followed him, didn't they? They, they come to him there. And, uh, and, and he turned around, and I guess when he turned around and saw them, which he knew they were there, right? But he saw their persistence. They, they, they wanted to be healed that day. And they were, they were crying, Lord, save us, O Lord, thou son of David, have mercy on us. And he looked at them and he asked them this question. This is on our heart tonight. The Bible says this. Jesus said, believe ye that I am able to do this. I mean, he could have turned around and touched them, but he wanted to know where their faith was. Do you believe I'm able to help you? And I want you to know, I want to ask you tonight, are you, do you believe tonight that God is able to help you tonight? Amen. Amen. I know there's needs all over the house of different de uh, uh, degrees, of different situations. But there's a man tonight in the house, and he's able tonight, he's well able to help you tonight. But you've got to believe that he's able to help you. Jesus was not able to help people in his hometown. The reason why wasn't because of his, his uh, lack of ability. It was their lack of faith. They were just looking at him as the carpenter's son. They was looking at him as Joseph and Mary's boy. They didn't look at him as the Messiah. So he left there. And that's why he said a, a, a prophet's without honor in his own country. Uh, but that there, it was because of their lack of faith. How many times we've left service after service after service and God wanted to help us, but we weren't a, a, a willing to allow God to help. Help us. Amen. But these two men, they believed. And that's why they had confidence. I, I believe that's why they followed. And they said, this man can help us. And he turned around and he said, you believe I'm able to do this? And they said, yea, Lord. Yea, Lord. And he, asked, he, he actually said this too. He said, according to your faith, be it unto you. According to your faith, 
be it unto you. Now, I begin to think about this. We all got mountains in our life. We've all got giants in our life, just like David faced uh, Goliath, that giant. But we've got spiritual giants in our life. We all do, right? We've all got temptations. We've all got weaknesses. We've all got circumstances. We've all got mountains to cross, uh, uh, valleys to go through, storms to, to go through in our life. Amen. It's like a roller coaster, ain't it? The Christian life is. Sometimes we're up, sometimes we're down. And sometimes I feel like I'm going upside down and backwards. But just like a roller coaster, we level out uh, by the grace of God, don't we? Amen. Uh, but, but through it all, through those storms and through all, all that, uh, uh, that, that we face, are we, do we believe tonight that God's able? God's able to meet that need. Amen? And, and, and it's these, these men here, they, 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 they had the faith. They had the faith that, that, that Jesus was able to help them. I begin to think about countless uh, uh, scriptures down through the Word of God where people believe God. They just believe God. Noah believed God. It didn't make sense. That, that, to, to build an ark when it, wasn't going, when it never had rain, but God said it was going to rain. So he believed God, right? Uh, Abraham believed God, didn't he? And it was counted unto him under righteousness. God, you know what God requires of us? Just to believe him. We make things so complicated in our life in order for, for, for things to happen. I, but, but all God wants us to do is believe Him. All God wants us to do is, is trust Him. Our, our lack of faith is hindering our walk with God. It's hindering our mountains being conquered. It's hindering us uh, uh, from getting through the valleys and the, and the storms of our life uh, uh, victoriously. Right? Because sometimes... And I'll be, I'll be honest with you, there's times that, that I've, had, I've had to really struggle with this, that, that I knew God was able to do it, but I wasn't really sure He was going to do it for me. Now that can turn into lack of faith, or that can turn into doubt. It really can. I mean, it's like Corbin, I knew, I knew God was able to heal him, but I really didn't know if He's going to or not. I mean, times it got bad, didn't it? So I really didn't know. And, and if we ain't careful, that can turn into doubt. But I, I prayed, Lord, I still trust you. No matter what, God, he's in your hands. Put it in God's hands, right? Whatever the situation is, whether it's sickness of a child or whatever it may be, put it in God's hands and say, God, no matter the outcome, regardless how this is going to turn out, I still trust you. I still believe you. I still love you, Lord. No matter what. But I believe sometimes if we're not careful, our faith, our faith can be maybe like, well, if it goes my way, then, Lord, I'll leave it in your hands. But regardless of how, how it turns out, we need to trust the Lord. Amen? How many of us has prayed for loved ones? We've prayed for God to heal them. We've prayed for God to, God to turn the situation around, but God took them on home. And, and, and if we ain't careful, that can cause bitterness, and we can, we can, we can get bitter at God. And I've, I've told you before, I asked the Lord one time, I said, Lord, why does people get bitter at you? I've seen a mother get bitter at God because her daughter, her daughter uh, passed away and, and the Lord, the Holy Spirit of God answered me just as plain as I'm a, I'm a talking tonight. It said, a lack of understanding. You say, well, that don't make sense. It's not that we understand what, what God is doing. We understand that what He's doing is right. He's holy. He's a righteous God. He's a holy God. He don't make mistakes. We understand that part of Him. Amen. We might not understand what he's doing and how the situation is going to turn out, 
That's where faith comes in. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is believing in God when it, when it hurts, when it don't make sense. Faith is trusting in God. That's why the heroes of God's Hall of Faith in Hebrews chapter number 11 is in there. It wasn't that they understood everything that God was doing. But they believed God when it didn't make sense. Man, according to your faith, be it unto you. I wonder sometimes, the reason maybe because we're not seeing the mountain move or the situation get any better is because of our faith. It's more on us than it is God. Solomon said, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. Sometimes I believe God well, it, it, it teaches us a lesson throughout all of our lives to trust Him more than we do ourselves. It's very easy to get, begin to think, well, now how am I going to make it through this? How, now, it kicks in in our mind. Well, now, how am I going to make ends meet? How am I going to do this? You ever thought about just praying about it? Why is it we come to that eventually, but it's the last resort? We do eventually get there as Christians, don't we? But that's we, when we get there, we're exhausted, we're wore out, we're about, about, to, about to just throw in our hand, or throw up our hands and quit. God's saying, if you'd have done this at first, you wouldn't be wore out with it. According to your faith, be it unto you. You think about of all the things that God has done for the people we read about in the Bible, for the people that we know around us in our church. I, I, it's amazing. You think about all the, the miracles God's done in this church. Amen? Miss Darlene, Miss Robin, the, the list goes on. Brother Kenneth, the, the list goes on of people with cancers, Miss Anna, uh, 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 people that, that's, that's dealt with a lot of, uh, of life-threatening things. Man? And the, I mean, like I say, I just named a few, but the, the list goes on. Of people all around us tonight that... The faith, your faith, your faith, you've trusted God, and God turned it around. Man, according to your faith, be it unto you. I begin to think about when people prayed. I think about in the book of Acts when Peter was put in prison. The Bible says that prayer was made without ceasing among the church. Prayer was made without ceasing in the church. The church got together. The church began to pray. And the church, when they began to pray, God, they rung the prayer bells of heaven. I like that song in the red book. Amen. They rung the prayer bells of heaven and they got, they got God's attention. And, and, and God, uh, I sent an angel down there and I woke old Peter up between all them soldiers. He got out there and he didn't even realize he was loose until he got outside the gate. The Bible says that uh, though while they was down there having prayer meeting, there's a knock on the door. And the damsel went to the uh, uh, road of there. She went to the door and, uh, and, and she said, Hey, Peter's at the door. And they said, No, that's his spirit or that's his ghost. And they couldn't even believe it. And, and, and how, how a lot of times we, we can't believe. We pray and we pray. Uh, uh, and, 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 and God really answers sometimes and we're so astonished. And I was thinking about this. They got it on their mind. God, we're a, we believe that you're able to get Peter out of that old prison. We believe that you're able to deliver. I don't know how they pray, but I believe it's somewhere along them lines. Lord, we're, we believe that you're able to deliver him. Deliver that man of God, would you, Lord? You know what? God answered their prayer. We underestimate prayer so much. We really do. Prayer is the last thing we, we do when it should be the first thing we do. 
I begin to think about this. Sometimes we get a little bit lazy on God. That's what the word slothful means in your Bible. That means lazy. Let's just be honest. We get lazy and not pray like we ought to. We get lazy on God and not pray for our lost people like we ought to. Man, I want to say that when we get it on our minds and we get focused on on that petition and get focused on that person, God, would you turn this around? Revival's starting uh, Monday night, this coming Monday night, this next coming Monday night. How about your prayer? Are you praying for revival? Are you seeking revival in your own life? Are you seeking revival for the community? Are you praying for them lost people that you've been praying for? Have you been praying fervently for them? We've got countless things in the Word of God where the church prayed, where where, where, where people called out to God and God turned it around. Man, I believe God's still able, don't you? He's still able to go to my lost people, your lost people, and speak to their heart and save their soul just like he did our hearts. Amen. He's still able to to turn people's lives around. What what the what the angel saying to Sarah when she heard the tidings that she was going to have a child? She laughed within herself. The angel said, Is there anything too hard for God? Is anything too hard for God? Think about what Caleb said. We, we're all well able to inherit the land. We're all well able to have revival, to see God move in a mighty and great way, to revive the church, to revive the county, to revive our community, to, to, uh, to save lost people. Amen? Revival is all the above, Right? It ain't just seeing lost people say it, it's seeing the church revived too. Amen? Amen. Any time's a good time to see a lost person saved. Amen? Amen? But the church, we need to get it on our mind. that God's able to do this. God's able to send revival. You get to hunger and thirst after righteousness, and guess what? You shall be filled. That's what the Bible says. He that hungereth and thirsteth after righteousness shall be filled. But I believe sometimes our hunger and our thirst, our appetites in other places than it is God. That's why our prayer life is in the shape it's in. Amen. But when we, when we look to the Lord, think about also Paul and Silas were put in prison for casting out that demon out of that lady. And the Bible says that they was down there and at midnight they sang songs or, or they prayed and they sang songs. And I can just imagine, I can, get, I can just think about it. Maybe it's pitch black, probably was. I can just hear a Paul say, hey, Silas, let's have prayer. <laughs> let's pray. No doubt they was hurting. Hurting where they'd been roughed up. Emotionally. You know the devil was saying, where's your God at now, boys? If God's so good, why, why, is he, why are you wound up in prison? The devil don't let up when you're down. <laughs> he don't, does he? But the Bible says that they, they prayed. And when they prayed, they started singing. And God began to move. When they prayed and they sang. What did the Lord say? He said, if I'd be lifted up, I'd draw men unto me. Amen. They began to lift the Lord up. I'd say, they said, Lord... You know where we're at. You know what kind of shape we're in. I wonder if he said, Lord, I know you're able to deliver us. 
But you know what? God had them down there for a reason. And there was a jailer down there that needed to be saved. And we might realize, we might think, well, Lord, why you got me in a place like this? Don't let your murmuring hinder God's plan for your life. I just said a mouthful. Of that. Hey, the Holy Ghost just said a mouthful. Don't let your murmuring and complaining of being out of your comfort zone hinder the will of God being done in your life. Yeah, they were in prison. Yeah, they've been beat. And it hurt. But God had a plan. God wanted to save that jailer. It may not be that. Hey, there's a, there's a big earthquake, a big shake, and God shook that jail. The jail doors flew open. And that uh, jailer come in there, and and, and he said uh, he was gonna he was gonna kill himself, wouldn't he? Because he he knew that if everybody would 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 escape, then it cost him big time. But Paul said, "Do thyself no harm. We're we're all here." And you know what? The man said this: "What must I do to be saved?" He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to say tonight that God had them in a place where they, were, they weren't real comfortable with. I don't believe that none of us would choose to be in prison, to be beat half to death. But you know what? Because they prayed, they, they, they allowed God to use their situation. Are you allowing God to use your situation for His glory and His honor? He allowed Lazarus to die for His glory and His honor. He said this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Amen. So, according to your faith, be it unto you. According to your faith, be it unto you. That's the message tonight. God speaks to your heart tonight. And I, I, I want to say, I believe in all of our lives, we need to take inventory of where our faith is. Are we trusting in man? Are we trusting in ourselves? Are we trusting in God more? Sometimes we'll try to trust in, in man more than we will God. The Bible says it's better to put your confidence in God than in man. The reason why is because man will let you down. Man's got his limitations. And I, I, I believe this with all my I believe a lot of people will put their more confidence in a doctor sometimes than they will God. Uh, we've got two and a half tonight, and you, I believe they'd agree. I believe there's people that look to them like, you're a doctor, you ought to be able to fix it. When they'd be the first to tell you, there's one that's greater than us, that he's the great physician. But I believe sometimes that we can put a lot of conf more confidence in a, in a doctor, in a man, than the great physician. We can put more confidence in, in, in whatever person that we're, we're uh, in the situation that we need. A lot of times we'll say, well, well, this person can help me. They can, but, you know, God's greater than that, ain't he? Amen. Is there another tonight? Is there another tonight as God speaks to your heart? Everybody, head bowed and every eye closed tonight. I want to, just as God, God speaks to your heart, let's come around here and pray with our sister. Listen tonight, God is able, God is able to meet your needs.